All right, everybody. Good, good morning. Yes, it's good morning here where I am. I'm Sandra Kellogg again, and I'm here with the fabulous Christine Baker, whom I have known for a very, very long time. Uh, Christine is definitely like I remember at certain points was almost the second mother figure to me. And um, I'm excited to have her here. I feel totally at peace and ease, which is the essence of Christine, I think. Um, so this is going to be fun. Christine, you want to introduce yourself? I am glad to be here too, Sandra. You're like my daughter. Uh, <laughs> I am Christine Baker and I have um, been a certified spiritual consultant and an ordained minister since the 70s and have um, helped women to be empowered, including this young woman who was a child when I first met her. and always a leader always a leader so it's great to be here uh, sandra <laughs> i went through all your sister's names <laughs> just like a mother does okay i know her so well it's great to be here sis what's your name again <laughs> oh sandra hi good morning good morning <laughs> um christine it's funny you mentioned obviously i've known you as a, as a kid I, one of my vivid memories of you is going to that Up, Up with People concert. Do you yes. remember that? Yes. That is my association with you and like just the energy of uplifting. It uplifting. was wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. Singing, your thing. Yeah. And um, youth, everything. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. What is it like? How would you describe like that energy of up, up with people, right? Oh, it's my favorite energy. Yeah. And I look for it uh, regularly to see people who are coming from their heart, coming from their enthusiasm, wanting to share their love and doing it with music, which sound is what we are. We are sound and light. And, you know, that energy just really inspires I spend sometimes when I've been down or just I end up on um, America's Got Talent and all the unusual people that that stepped out and were mag magnificent singers and seeing the audience so supportive and so inspired. To me, it just reminds me the world is a beautiful place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that word the, like the word love i always hear you say that like mm -hmm. just that essence of love why 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 do you yeah. always talk about that um i am um well you know i'm the keeper of the gate is what i've always i've been told um by spirit and um, when I was 14, actually, I was in a Methodist church listening to the minister. You know, teenagers' minds drift easily. And so I wasn't paying too much attention to him, but I felt the presence. There was a beautiful painting of Jesus above him. And I felt a message downloaded to me from Jesus. I don't know why this is stuck in my mind. He said, my message was, love one another as I have loved you not necessarily what that man is saying mm. and uh that has always stuck with me and i was so yeah that's the message of love now do you hear my little dog i hear your little dog wanting to join the interview <laughs> i'm gonna close the door okay <laughs> Her brothers come home, so she's barking at her. She's a five pound chihuahua and he's a 95 pound pit bull. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talk about diversity. <laughs> diversity, yeah. So I always am striving to be more loving and realize that heaven and hell are our choice. We can choose which one we want to be in. And that means my thinking going into the story of how things are not working the way I want them to, or changing my thinking, changing my energy, and being more the loving kind of person that I want to be. And this just always been my focus since that 14 year old experience. What does that mean, the keeper of the gate to you? Well, 
we have the, we live in a world of polarity, the dichotomy. Um, and I was brought up Methodist and they talked about heaven and hell. And I remember at age 18 or something, I was at a, a church camp and I remember they asked, what do you think of heaven and hell? And I said, I think they're right here mm -hmm. because I've seen people experiencing hell and I've seen people experiencing great joy. And I, I know that I have, because I got involved in uh, Wayshores College and the Inner Peace Movement when I was 22, mm. where I learned that I'm a soul with a physical body and that I am able to change my thinking. I'm able to tap into my, we called it psychic at the time, but my extrasensory perception, my inner intuition, and uh, be able to hear and have the help of um, divine love, mm. uh, guardian angels, uh, the spirit within. And so I have always um, relied on that to be my inspiration and to be my help and my uh, protection. And uh, so they can't do it for me. Mm. You know, it's the ideas and impressions and the nudges that I get that keep me going in the direction that brings fulfillment, helps me. I mean, I rolled a car when I was 24 and I heard in my head, relax, Chris, it won't kill you. Mm. And it didn't, did kill the car pretty good, mm -hmm. but it didn't kill me. <laughs> and it, many, many, many experiences. I traveled extensively, uh, giving lectures throughout the country, mm -hmm. um, including into Alaska which was, you know, I left my car, my security in Seattle, and I went to Alaska and I had to get airplanes everywhere. This was in the 70s. Yeah. So um, I relied on that voice, that inner inspiration. And it was a very successful experience for me. But um, I was young and immature. And then we think we can do anything. So I was more, I was very courageous. And now you know you can do anything, right? I know, I know I can do anything. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the aging process, which is also a very exciting new chapter in my life of having different things say, hi, you have a neg you've neglected me, my knee, my... Yeah. <laughs> so life is a journey. And yeah. that whole thing of knowing that I have choices and that I can make choices. Yeah. In the last uh, 20 years, I have, uh, you know, studied things like conscious language to understand more clearly how the power of the word in, infects and, ex, and uh, affects everything that I do in life, you know? So I, I want to hear more about that. What's hysterical right now? is my dog, I'm in an entirely different building, has found her way outside up the stairs and is <laughs> calling at my, at my door right now. I'm gonna give her a minute, see if she changes her mind, but I might get up. Okay. Um, yeah. Conscious word is, so tell me more about that. What is that? Well, you, if you ever say, I can't remember, mm -hmm. what are you saying? You can't remember. Yeah. So I choose to remember. Um, I, or if you say, uh, I don't want to, I can't, we're always choosing what we say and how we can live. And we tell the same story over and over again. We're going to have that experience. Mm -hmm. Eight very powerful words are, I can, I am, I will, I choose, I have, I love, I create, I enjoy. And we, we get caught in saying um, the opposite. I, I have been uh, practicing positive ones. I can't remember the negative ones, but mm -hmm. you, you catch it in conversation when you hear people. I ha had a friend who wanted to get a new car that she could pull with her RV. And all she ever talked about was all the ones that weren't the right ones. She didn't want white in outside. She didn't want black interiors. She didn't want this. She didn't want that. She didn't want that. And I was on a trip with her to Arizona and I heard her saying these things. And I said, let's talk about what it is that you do want. I want, you know, a nice color, a nice blue, like you had, I want an interior that's beige. I want this, I want that. That day 
I left I, after we did the trip. I left. She was in Kingman or uh, Arizona. She found the car <laughs> in just that two days that I was with her, and we changed her language from "I these are all the things I don't want" mm -hmm. to "This is what I do want." She found it. So that's how fast it can change. Yeah, I feel like that's that's it goes right back to what you were saying that words the keeper of the gate like that's an mm -hmm. example of how everyone can live that energy of being like i choose right i choose right. which way i'm going to go what i'm going to focus on the word yeah. to use well i always wanted a relationship and with the program that i was with that i dedicated 30 years to um i was dedicated to the cause and when I left that program, it changed uh, the way that it was proceeding. I went out into the real world <laughs> and um, I still wanted a relationship. And I finally realized I had to be the person I wanted to be in relationship. I had to become that person. My crystals just fell down. Uh, <laughs> this is a dynamic conversation. <laughs> So I had to be that person that I wanted to be. And in 2019, I got, I found that person who mm. was a, compatible to me when I forgot about wanting to have, you know, I wasn't making a big deal about it. I was happy. I was in tune. I was doing all the things I wanted to do. Mm. And there he appeared. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've been in a, I've been learning about relationships for the last five years, but it's like a great chapter of, the many different things that I've done in my life. And yeah. so I want to encourage women. I, I like to work with women. That's why I, I like the soul part, the woman part, and the empowered part mm -hmm. of uh, your title and um, the whole network that has been uh, being created on Facebook with the empowered networks. And so being able to uh, share with people from my experience of how I step by step, struggle by struggle, you know, it wasn't always easy, all the different kinds of things that I had to learn and, and reprogram myself about. But it's been a very fulfilling life to be able to help lots of people all around, all around the world, really. Mm. Yeah. So networking. Yeah. So I mean, like a lot of what you're talking about is like, is the law of attraction, right? What you're putting out, the energy you're putting out, you're receiving back, what you're focusing on, it's you're manifesting in your life. But but to me, it's 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 bringing that into like a very practical um, oh, yeah. realm because well, there's I'm there's that idea of understanding it, right? And then there's another thing about living it, right? Right, cause and effect, yeah. and um, the the uh, I've always done different workshops throughout my life and uh, balanced life mentoring is one of the avenues that I've worked with because I've found it really important. The four different categories of life, rather than 12 categories of life, let's fix everything in, you know, how's your relationships, your finances, all of, I just make it down to four. Our state of consciousness, our spiritual connection to something, our body, which is our home. We have to have a healthy body in order to get done what we want to do. Um, and our relationships, because we learn the most from those close relationships and the people that we meet. And then our career or our service to the world. Mm -hmm. And knowing where you stand in each of those things, it's always a balancing act, but it's also um, the ability to see that I have the right to be loyal to a meditation time every day to an exercise t time every day to spending time with family and friends and expanding the relationships that i have and having a career mm. it's not the career first and the career is the most th important thing it's not the family first and the family is the most important thing it's that that balance that uh brings greater fulfillment in life mm. so that's been hard that's been really important for me because i was totally devoted to a cause mm -hmm. for many years and uh, when i left that cause i was sort of physically and mentally burnt out and uh so i had to rebuild 
my self esteem, my physical uh, endurance, my um, desires for many, many different kinds of experiences and uh, avenues of understanding life so that I could understand myself and other people better. Mm. And uh, it's been fun. Yeah. What's um what's up with the artwork back there? Uh, I'm desired to be a painter. So this is a painting that my partner had. And this is a painting he had. And I love this abstract one. Mm. These the, I just put these th up yesterday. These are different art uh, ex extravaganzas that I've always been involved in. Um, one of the first uh, courses that uh, Francisco Cole, the founder of the program that we've been involved in, offered me was to go teach um, a intuitive art class, mm. which never came off because then nobody attended. But I have done different kinds of intuitive art and different kinds of art. Creativity, creativity is very important for the soul. Yeah. So creativity, so, what does that, what does that mean to you? Because there's, I think sometimes people have a very specific connotation about what creativity is. Well, Hey, my name is, my last name is Baker. Mm -hmm. So cooking is one of my favorite creative things. And, uh, but also I've done all different kinds of, um, modalities. I mean, I have a crystal bowl and some native American flutes. I've done photography on the top there are some of my photographs. I've painted other people's, this is a, a coloring book that I've done the coloring of, but I didn't do the drawings. And this is um, uh, ink, um, alcohol inks. Uh, I just do whatever comes. Uh, I found yesterday, I was looking at some of my pictures. I took pictures of all different kinds of light. Mm -hmm. And I remembered, oh yes, I was gonna do a book or uh, a column about, rainbow colors and bright lights and different light shapes and things because we are light our spirit is full of light mm -hmm. so um, creativity can be anything uh, my partner likes to make three-dimensional um, characters out outside uh, that he puts in the yard and out of chicken wire and clothes and yeah know. Yeah. And we're meant to be creative singing you sing your family's the singers yeah uh, so it's it stirs the soul and inspires the soul i know for me sometimes too I it's feel letting like, spirit come through yeah yeah that's that 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 last bit there the that it's it's kind of just because sometimes my creativity i feel is just like solutions coming to me to a challenge that i'm having and that's me being creative yes. So it's like that what you just said there yeah. just rings true for me. It's spirit coming through and spirit coming through, getting out of the way of the intellect, which is the box of the past mm -hmm. and all the things that we've known from the past. And the future is the what ifs and what could happens, but the now is what we have. Mm -hmm. So taking what our experiences have given us and what is possible and putting it together is um the avenue of creativity whether it's in business or personal or social or or artistic we're all artists in some way mm -hmm. you yeah. know and um this the internet is a wonderful space where people show their artistic uh uh abilities whether it's having a conversation or it's it's and video videoing it or all kinds of things mm, yeah the um the you said the word intellect it's the what do they say you had the you need to have just enough intellect to organize yourself to accomplish what you're inspired and have a feeling to accomplish so that's yes feeling and I not the part that thoughts. says not the voice that says you can't do that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't want to do that right you know we won't make any money that way yeah yeah it feels so, like to me like you've lived a lot of that you've lived your life a lot that way would you say that inspiration uh, yeah going with the flow yeah i i people are the most important thing in my life not a career not a this or a that just mm. knowing having new ways to meet people to share with people um to be with people um whether it was working in washington dc at amtrak uh mm. the national office <laughs> or the Centers for Public Broadcasting, or whether it was uh, giving a lecture tour 
in uh, Seattle with over 100 people or, you know, going to a networking meeting here in Santa Fe. Yeah. I always have people around. Have you ever gone through your life and like written down all of the various things you've been involved in? Some, sometimes I've had to uh, do it by year to remember where I was. I, I used to have a whole list of where I was. But um, I, I, you know, at night when I can't sleep, sometimes I will pick a subject and I just go through all the beautiful places I've been mm. or all the unusual people that I've met. Or I'll just, you know, uh, all the great sayings that I ever heard, you know, just to get the mind in an uplifted gratitude point. Yeah. What would you say were, and you kind of touched on this a bit, but I'm just called to ask you again, like if you were to say there was a specific muscle you really needed to learn to flex in your life. For um, me? Yeah, for you. Which what, muscle? Yeah. Well, um, there's two things that come to mind. One is those four getting balance in those four areas right. has been very, very important to look at all four of them. And, uh, but the other, I spent a lot of my life being focusing on being more loving. Mm -hmm. I just need to be more loving. And that left some areas out. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to Santa Fe, I, um, the community that attracted me the most was unity which is a international uh, congregation of fellowship of people with more of a new thought training. And one of the, uh, found, the founders, both were, um, they founded it because they had ill health and they healed themselves. Mm -hmm. So the um, husband, uh, Myr uh, Myrtle Fillmore and Charles Fillmore, he found by his studies that there were 12 significant powers he thought he thought of it as the 12 disciples from the Christian tradition, but it could be 12 chakras. But I realized I needed to work on all 12 of those to balance out the love. And the 12 are faith, strength, zeal or enthusiasm, will, understanding, power, which is the power of the voice, actually love, divine order, wisdom, release, life, and one other that it's skipping my mind right now, imagination. Creativity. So <laughs> I, I spent a year working on one of those each month wow. and I felt like it grounded me. It, it made me more balanced and uh, it, it, expanded um possibilities in in moving forward in different areas of my life so um those were would be the two areas that i have felt the most and always always improving my communication with my inner guidance mm. wow that's good always, stuff you know, right there <laughs> I'm going to go back and I'm going to have to do some assessments for myself here. That's very cool. Yeah. Any so, else, any, you any know, lasting words. Yeah. I was going to say there's a little delay, but go ahead. Yes. My bandwidth isn't so great, but um, lasting words, everybody has potential and that word can be scary. It's just your own self-creation and, and creative expression and trusting to go for what excites you. You know, if, if you're a woman out there, a child out there, know that you have the power and the uh, freedom to express your uniqueness in your favorite way. And uh, don't let anybody tell you you can't. That's beautiful. That word potential yeah. is so, is so powerful. And, and I can feel how, if you, if I relate to it from the perspective of, you know, me, me being true to my inner potential and not making it about outer potential, right? Yes. It's very free. Yeah. Very and important. Inspiring. Very important. Very important because when we do think of potential, it sometimes is that intellectual drive. 
right. instead of the heart drive. And it's the heart drive that we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Those are good lasting words. We're going to we're going to wrap it there, I think. Um, Christine, I, I feel like people are going to listen to this and really want to connect with you. So how can they do that? Well, I don't. Um, hmm. I have a Facebook page, Christine Baker, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I have a, a Facebook page that um, is uh, Lighthearted Love. Hmm. You can find it on my christinebaker.com. And it is waiting for me to add more creativity to it. Love it. Technology is not my favorite place to go, but I'll learn. <laughs> I I can relate to actually a little bit to that. I'd rather be out there in the field that I'm staring at at the moment, but um, but there's such purpose to this as well. So, um, yes. Cool. So we'll also we'll tag you in 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 the video so that people okay. can find you. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Thank this has been so a much. lot of fun. So I really much. appreciate it. I love it. Good to talk to you. All right. You too. Have a good one. And uh, I'm going to end end the stream now.